Hello again, I'm Robert Fithin, and today it's all about eight tracks. Yeah, eight track tapes. If you're a little bit younger, you might have seen these things in antique malls or flea markets and wondered what in the world they were. If you're around my age, you might have played some of these as a kid. And if you're a little older, uh, maybe you had these in your car. But yeah, eight track tapes. So like, you know how albums are, are side one and side two, basically. And it doesn't really matter if side one is a little bit longer than side two or vice versa. No big deal. With an eight track, it has four programs of music and they're on the same piece of tape going around and around and of course it's in stereo so four programs in stereo that's eight tracks that's why they're called that but yeah they all have to be the same length and that's where all the issues start coming in with eight track tapes or at least some of the issues the big issues uh most albums don't divide into four equal parts and so you have all kinds of craziness the main one is songs in completely different order than they are on the album like this beatles abbey road eight track her majesty is the fourth track on here because like i said they have to do they have to move things around so that they could try to get each program to be the equal length and so yeah you've got um come together uh followed by maxwell's silver hammer uh followed by oh darling followed by Her Majesty. That's just program one. <laughs> and it ends with the end, though. So there's that. But yeah, you have all kinds of issues with people putting, a, you know, putting the tracks in different order uh, to issue the eight tracks. So you got people growing up like myself with some eight tracks, and you remember the songs in that order, like Nazareth, Hair of a Dog. I, I mentioned this before, that that's the first hard rock album I ever heard when my older brother had it and uh, would play it all the time. And Hair of the Dog, the song goes right into Changing Times, which is great like one-two punch. On the album, it, they're, they're separated by two songs. So uh, those are my two favorite Nazareth songs back-to-back -back on the 8-track. But uh, in addition to having songs in all kinds of different order, you also had 8-tracks that would fade a song out, click over and then to the next program, and then fade the song back in to try to equal everything out. Usually it was done during like the music solo or guitar solo or whatever. But yeah, you'd be listening to something, suddenly it would just fade out, click over to the next program, fade back in. You also had instances like this uh, Beatles Sgt. Pepper 8-track, where they would loop songs to make them longer. So they would, again, try to space things out so it would fit evenly. So Sgt. Pepper's reprise on here has a loop in it where the song is actually uh, made to be a little bit longer. And by the way, the tape ends with the Sgt. Pepper reprise, which is kind of a neat way to end the, the album with the cheering. And then it just doesn't go into a Day in the Life. Day in the Life is actually the last song on the third program. So you had that. You had eight tracks where a song would be completely repeated. You know, because again, they're trying to fit all of these into four equal programs so you have a song repeat the interesting one was pink floyd animals where they had an actual special version of the song recorded the blues guitarist snowy white actually recorded a guitar solo for the song pigs on the wing which is just one song on the eight track it's not divided into two parts like it is on the album it's just one song with a guitar solo in the middle so if you see that eight track anywhere pink floyd animals pick that up that's actually worth something because it's got that special version of uh, pigs on the wing but mostly they're fading in and out songs they're looping songs they're repeating songs anything to try to get all four programs <laughs> the same length so that's why they're doing that because it's the same piece of tape going around you can actually see it in this radio cart this is actually how eight tracks kind of started with these radio carts we used to use these in college and uh, basically you just throw it in the player and it play you pull it back out and you don't have to you know string up the tape or anything so this was great for radio stations playing like little jingles you push it in play the jingle pull it back out put it in another one morning shows where they've got all these things going on at the same time uh sometimes commercials would be on here sometimes there'd be full songs on here so they didn't wear out the record if it was like a big hit single that they were going to play you know 20 times a day they would uh put it on a cart like this and boom they'd have it and pull it out and you know you could you could play it a lot without wearing out the record these were called carts these are actually eight track cartridges and again these are great because you just pushed them in played them pulled them back out i remember being a little kid you know i wasn't allowed to touch the big stereo and put records on you don't want your grubby little kid fingers all over the records or whatever but an eight track was great for kids because you just jam it in the player and it starts playing it actually plays wherever you wherever it left off so it's not like a cassette where you can rewind it to the beginning or, or a record where you always started at the beginning of the song or whatever if you want you hear the whole album you know these things wherever you pulled it out last time 
you put it in there, it's going to start playing right where it left off. So yeah, the 8-tracks, uh, several issues with these. Not to mention the sound quality of these things. Now, 8-track tape actually moves along in the player at twice the speed of a cassette tape. So you think it's going to sound twice as good because it's a, you know, a tape formula. Usually the faster the tape is going, the better it sounds. One of the problems is these things, like you can see here, it winds into itself to make an endless loop. So you've got the tape winding here, go meeting in the center and then coming back out and spooling back around. So in order for that to stay loose and, and to keep playing over the years, there has to be like a kind of a lubricant on there. And they use this kind of graphite wax on there. And that brought down the sound quality because it would be on the underside of the tape. It would get on the overside of the next thing on the spool and it would get on the heads of the tape player. And generally people that had eight tracks didn't care that much about sound quality. They wanted the convenience, jam it in the player and play it. So they didn't ever take the time to like clean the tape heads or anything. So, you know, usually you go over to somebody's house, they had an eight track. It didn't sound very good. But the whole reason these things became popular in the first place in the uh, late 60s was the convenience. You couldn't have a record player in your car unless you were Elvis Presley. So you had eight tracks in your car. You couldn't take eight, you know, you took eight tracks to the beach. You they were very portable, very durable. Just, like I said, you just throw them in the player and they play and we're good to go. But all kinds of sound issues, all kinds of, like I said, timing issues, trying to make the programs the same length. And then people just wouldn't necessarily take People just wouldn't necessarily take care of them. They'd throw them in the backseat of the car. You know, the tape would get hot. It wouldn't matter. These were so just thrown around uh, everywhere. But yeah, 8-track tapes, good times with these. Now, the players themselves, they needed maintenance as well. Like I said, the heads needed cleaning. But also that head moving up and down to play different parts of the tape, clicking up and down. I, I mentioned before songs fading out and the thing clicking over. Well, what I'm talking about is the head, the playhead on the, on the tape player would click up and down to play different sections of the tape where the different programs were. And doing that often enough, you know, clicking all the time would loosen up that and it would become misaligned. And what you'd have then is uh, you could hear like two songs playing at the same time. You know, you'd hear like the main song that's supposed to be on, and then you'd hear another song that was on a different program kind of in the background. What people would do when they had their 8-track in the player, they would like take a matchbook or like a, a playing card and fold it up, stick it under the 8-track, jam it under there, and like move it up you know, so it would, would realign when really what they wanted to do was realign the, the playhead. But they weren't technical enough to do that. Some of the players even came with a screw in the bottom where you could realign it, but... People weren't that into it. You know, people that had eight tracks, they just wanted something to throw in and play and, and forget about it. Another bad thing about eight tracks was, uh, you know, you have the small artwork like you do on cassettes here. Um, but some of them looked really cool, like these blue G GRT ones. These I always thought these looked really cool. ABC Records did theirs on uh, these and a few other labels. Uh, Sire, here's, here's, a, here's a rare one. Punk Rock 8-track from the Dead Boys. This one's got songs all out of order, too. So this big song that ends the album with that big death gong, that's actually the second to last song on here. But yeah, Susie Quattro, uh, Samand, I got some, Betty Davis. Love some funk on 8-track. You know, just some funky 70s stuff on 8-track. I think that's the way it's supposed to sound there. But uh, this actually just got a re-release, by the way. The uh, They Say I'm Different album from uh, Betty Davis. But yeah, great, great blue 8-tracks. Sometimes they came in yellow. Like this Black Sabbath uh, debut eight track on Ampex tape, but most of the time here's a red one. This uh, Shuggy Otis eight track. So you had you had some different colors, but mostly they were black, white, and uh, kind of a grayish color. And one of the things about eight tracks is you could easily tell the uh, Tape Club eight tracks, like Columbia House and the RCA ones. You could really tell the difference. Like on a record, sometimes the manufacturer by Columbia House is in real fine print. And that's the only difference. You've really got to look for it to see it. But on 8-tracks, the entire 8-track would look different. Like, like here's the uh, Queen the Game from... Uh, see, I told you, they just fall. No problem. Queen the Game on a Columbia House 8-track. They always had the big 8 on the back. They basically looked like CBS 8-tracks because that's what Columbia House was. Uh, so the CBS 8-tracks, like this one from Miles Davis, they look the same no matter what. Here's a red one. Bitches Brew on 8-track. So... You know, double album on one eight track. You could just listen to the whole thing. Didn't have to change stuff around. But yeah, you can see the difference here in the Queen, the game, 
Columbia House 8-track, the RCA Club 8-track, which looks like RCA 8-tracks, where they were always white, and then the one that you bought in the store on Electra. All three completely different looking. That was one thing about 8-tracks, is you could easily tell the difference between the Music Club ones and the ones you'd buy in the store sometimes. Uh, but yeah, just good stuff on here. Here's a psychedelic one from Capital. SRC. Don't see that too often on 8-tracks. I love these ones that are kind of rare. Usually when you see 8-tracks for sale, like I said, in a flea market or antique mall or something like that, there are always these ones that nobody wants. Like, the, you know, the same as the records. The, the, the Roger Whitaker, the Perry Como, you know, that kind of stuff. Or it's old, like, country ones that have been long forgotten about. Not, not good stuff like Dolly Parton and Don Williams and, and stuff like that, but just old stuff that nobody cares about anymore. But yeah, those are the ones you usually see, the ones that nobody wants. Rarely do you see good stuff like uh, the Beatles or... Here's, here's Rush 2112. Here's Fleetwood Mac Tusk. Here's Lynn Collins. Some more great funk. You got the Woodstock album on 8-track. ZZ Top, Rio Grande Mud. All kinds of 8-tracks that I've uh, collected over the years. Don't be jealous, but I do have a sealed Village People Go West. From Columbia House. Now, I talked about how, you know, the differences between, like, the Columbia House ones can look different from the ones you buy in the store. Also, ones that are from the label can also look different sometimes. Here's Rush 2112. Two completely different looking cartridges, but they're both legitimate retail versions of this. They're just, depending on what company made them or where they were made in the uh, country, you know, they look different. Uh, also, depending on the time something was made. Early on, uh, the artwork was on the slipcase. Uh, such as the case with this, uh, well, the artwork really isn't on here, but you have like the record company and the track listing and all that is on the slipcase of this Partridge family 8-track. It's a, it's a Partridge cartridge. But then uh, like later on, the artwork would of course be right on the 8-track itself. But early ones have just the track listing, you know, with no artwork. The artwork was on the slipcase, like on the, this is the case with this Marshall Tucker Band 8-track. Now, it's funny because, like I mentioned, I was a music fan from way early on. So I wasn't allowed to touch the record player, but I could jam in eight tracks. That was fine. Um, and I'm talking a music fan. I mentioned this before, like when I was three years old. I mean, I grew up, I, I was a weird kid. I did not care about cartoons. I didn't care about action figures. I didn't want toys. Didn't matter. From three years and older, all I wanted every birthday, every Christmas was records and tapes. I had my little close and play record when I was three. I had my little eight track player. I think I got one of those when I was like four or five. Got my first Grand Prix stereo, or as I called it, Grand Pricks. And people would get upset, and I had no idea why they were getting upset because that's what it looked like P R I X, Grand Pricks. I got that when I was six years old. Most kids don't have their own stereo or even ask for their own stereo at that time when they were six, but. What happened was I started playing 8-tracks and started, you know, working with them, whatever. I actually figured out how they... Whatever. I actually figured out how they worked when I was a little kid and started, like, working with them and fixing them and whatever. And it, it got out and it, to the point where my family would have friends, like older friends, with broken 8-tracks. They would give them to me and I would fix them for them. And I don't think that a lot of them knew that, you know, because they would say, oh, my brother fixes 8-tracks. They probably imagined, like, a 19-year-old. I don't think they had any idea that it was a 6-year-old that was fixing their 8-tracks for them, taking them apart and uh, repairing them. But, yeah, that's what was going on. And also, what was fun was blank 8-track tapes, you know, recording your own stuff. Like, here's one from TDK. Capital had theirs. Of course, Memorex, huge name with blank tapes at the time. You had the Memorex ones, and just like cassettes, you had the 60-minute ones and the 90-minute uh, ones. Radio Shack, for whatever reason, had their own times. They had 40-minute ones and 80-minute ones. But yeah, blank eight tracks. They were kind of, you know, you had to really know what you were doing because when you got to the fourth program and it clicked back to the first program, it would start erasing itself if you didn't take the eight track out. So some players, you know, fancier players had a thing where you know, it would stop at the end of everything or whatever. But yeah, you had to time. I remember I would time everything out so I didn't have to do the fading in and out. I was, I was, I was all about making uh, eight tracks and fixing eight tracks when I was, you know, six, seven, <laughs> seven years old. Okay, so getting into an eight track can sometimes be a little tricky depending on what kind of cartridge it is. You've got several kinds here. Some of them are, are a lot more easy than others. Uh, the Beach Boys here on Capitol is cool. Uh, not too difficult to get into. However, 
Um, there's a hidden screw under here that you have to undo. So basically, in order to open this A-Track, you'd have to ruin the label here because you'd have to get to that screw that's under there. There's uh, this kind, RCA kind. These things are durable, high quality tape. RCA uh, and RCA Music Club made some great 8-track tapes. Unfortunately, to get into these things, you've got to have a big screwdriver and basically pop it apart. And then once you've done that, sometimes it just goes back together and then just falls apart. You actually have to glue it back together or get some uh, tape. Or, or something on the sides, and uh, yeah, it it's, can be a little, a little tricky. And if they have this thing here that doesn't have the screw, uh, you know, like the little rivet there, um, I don't know how to get that out. So <laughs> this one actually has it to where you can just unscrew it, but some of them don't have that. And uh, yeah, you have to basically rip the whole, th break the whole thing. It's terrible to try to work on RCA 8-tracks. Now, some of the other ones are pretty easy. As you can see here, the label's already off of this Otis Redding, so that screw is exposed, so you just undo the screw and kind of pry it apart with a screwdriver. The best ones, though, to work on are the, um, the CBS ones from Columbia House, and some other labels did it, too. Like, in this case, it would be Mercury with this Rush one. Uh, you just basically get a little screwdriver here, and you just put it in there, these little tabs, and you put it in there, and you open them. I'm going to use this heart one because uh, the label on this is basically shot, as you can see. And this is the thing that happens with 8-tracks, too, that have been left in the sun or out in the car dash or something. The artwork just gets ruined with, uh, you know, basically being left out like that. So I'm going to go ahead and do this one because there's not much risk there because it already looks uh, like hell anyway. So you basically just put your screwdriver in that tab right there, and you push in and down, and uh, you kind of open the top there. You want to be very careful. You kind of want to wiggle it a little bit and make sure that it's it's coming out easily you don't want to kind of get forceful with it because you can pop that off there and then there's nothing to hold it together and in the same way with these two hidden ones at the bottom you just kind of work your way in there and uh, it comes right apart really easily just like that and that's the inside of an eight track like i said you have the endless loop there where it's looping here and it feeds into itself and comes out in the center and uh, if your eight track is uh, good and not not wound up too tight it should it should go pretty easily like that. That's a good 8-track right there. Now, this is a good pad right there. The pads on this are actually pretty good. You want to have good pads, and uh, otherwise you're, you're going to have low fidelity because your playhead pushes up against that. And uh, if there's no pad there, if it's rotted out or worn out or something, it's going to be pushing that, and it's not going to get that uh, friction that it needs to, to push the tape up against the head. Same thing with the roller there. These things are made of rubber so they can get all gunky and everything. So it's always good if you're if you're serious about eight tracks and fixing them to have a nice supplies on hand like some nice replacement pads. There's actually two different kinds of pads. There's these kind and then there's the kind like that that are on springs that come with like the RCA ones. So um, it's a good idea to have some replacement pads on hand. Always a good idea to have a, a splicing block razor blade, and this foil. And what's important about this foil is this is actually what makes the program head, the playhead, change programs. It's what helps it move up and down. There's a sensor in there that senses when this piece of aluminum travels by on the tape, and that's what actually makes that, uh, you know, the, the playhead change and that clicking sound changing over from one playhead to another. And it's also where the tape splice is as well. And a lot of tapes over the years, that splice, you know, this tape will get rotted out and that splice will come undone and then you'll be playing your tape and it'll, one program will end and that'll be it. And it's like, what happened? Where's the music? Well, your splice came apart and you've got to re-splice it with the old splicing block and razor blade and foil. And sometimes it's a good idea just to have some regular splicing tape too in case the tape rips apart or whatever. But one of the main reasons that a tape will do that, other than the splice coming apart, is this gets too tightly wound on there and the tape can't travel uh, like it should so it just kind of basically locks up so yeah that's the inside of an eight track right there just one reel you know one piece of tape four programs on the same piece of tape got to be equally timed out traveling through here and through here and um, hopefully you got a good wheel there and some nice pads that'll push it up against the playhead and Everything uh, should sound pretty good if it's working properly. And like I mentioned before, a great thing about these uh, CBS ones, if you've taken it apart properly and you've been kind of gentle about doing that, they just basically snap right back together. You do have to make sure that this tape is behind these things. You don't want to end up with a situation like that. You want to make sure it's nice on there and kind of put this part on first, make sure the tape is in there, aligned properly. 
and it just snaps right back together just like a snap and you are uh, ready to go. Here's actually, the I, I've talked about how I've collected these over the years and found them. These actually I've had since I was a little kid. I talked about having eight tracks when I was a little kid. One of the first eight tracks I ever had, Kiss Double Platinum on eight track. And talk about rearranged song orders. Strutter and Deuce, the first songs on the actual album, they're not even on the same eight track. So yeah, just completely rearranged songs. It's a mess, but you got to love the mess of the 70s. Uh, eight tracks. Now I mentioned that 70s, you know, it was like the late 60s when uh, eight tracks first came around and they were pretty big in the 70s. I mean, most people had at least a few eight tracks, like I said, mostly for their car or for something portable, uh, serious music people that really liked sound quality and wanted to hear albums the way they were meant to be heard, obviously had the records. But um, eight tracks started going away, I think around the early 80s, I remember. Because eight, in 1980, I think eight tracks were still pretty big. By 1981, they started getting phased out. In 82, they were done. They were gone. Um, I mean, they were, remember MySpace for people who are a little younger? Remember how that was awesome and huge and everybody had it and then just one day it was just gone and no one cared? That's kind of how 8-tracks seemed to have been. They, were just, they just went away. It was the cassette that, that took over. And, uh, you know, cassettes were around in the 70s too, but they, they hadn't quite perfected the sound quality. You know, cassette runs about twice as slow as an 8-track. The tape is only half the size. Um, it was really meant for more like, uh, you know, voice recording and dictation type stuff. But then they started making improvements on the actual tape itself. And uh, people just started really moving more towards the cassette for a way of uh, portable music. And, you know, you could rewind cassettes. You could fast forward them a lot faster than you could an 8-track. Some 8-track players did have a fast forward feature. But it didn't go anywhere as fast as, as like a cassette fast forward. Eight track was like two times the speed. It was basically just sped it up a little bit. Whereas with a cassette, I mean, it really, you can tell a, a rewind and fast forward on a cassette goes pretty, pretty fast. But yeah, uh, and, and of course with cassettes, you, you, they were split in two, like an album. You had side one and side two. So you didn't have to rearrange all the songs. You didn't have this fading out and fading back in nonsense. You didn't have looped songs and all that stuff went away with when cassettes got popular in the uh, early 80s. So people definitely were like, yeah, I'm going with this and uh, no more of the 8-tracks. I remember 8-tracks just seemed to have just disappeared from stores like one week. You know, they went from being everywhere and then suddenly they were nowhere. And that was, I want to say right around 80, 81 really is when, when that started to happen. Now, even though 8-tracks disappeared from stores, there's still a place where you could buy new 8-tracks of new releases all the way up until the late 80s, and that was those music clubs like Columbia House. In fact, they were making eight tracks you could order through their thing all the way up until like late 1988. I mean, you could get Michael Jackson bad on an eight track. You could get Prince Sign of the Times on an eight track. You could even get Bruce Springsteen, that box set, seven live 75 to 85. You could get that on an eight track. That's pretty bizarre. Now, the legend has it, the final eight track ever made uh, you know, back in the day, was Fleetwood Mac's Greatest Hits. That was the, the last one that Columbia House produced, which Fleetwood Mac makes sense. They're, they're, they're a big eight-track band. You know, I've got the Tusk I showed earlier and the debut. Rumors is another one of those uh, ones where I've heard that uh, I think it's the chain is either looped or extended or something on the eight-track. So, uh, yeah, Fleetwood Mac closing out the era of eight-tracks. That's, that's probably very appropriate. I still remember Columbia House, too, how they had the, the reel-to-reel -reel tapes long after they uh, disappeared from everywhere else. In fact, I still remember the codes. S was when you, wonder, when you wanted to order a record, it was S. I'm assuming that's a holdover from the stereo mono days. C was for cassette, X was for 8-track, and T was for reel-to-reel -reel tape. I don't know why I still remember that after all these years. That information is still in my head. I'd like to remove it and replace it with something like some... I don't know how to repair a combustible engine or something like that, but no, I still remember for some reason all of the uh, Columbia House format codes. So here's what it looks like to actually play an 8-track. This is my uh, Panasonic player that I got just a few years ago, completely refurbished. You can still get certain parts for 8-track players like belts and things like that, but some of the other mechanisms in there are a little bit uh, trickier to find. But basically, like I said, here's how you play it. That's it. You just put in the tape and it starts playing. Now this is a recorder, so you can also record it and you can see the levels and set the levels and everything. This one actually does have the fast forward and the counter here. But basically you have these four lights and uh, 
Oh, wow. As I'm talking, it clicks over. But yeah, the tape, basically, the album just started over again on track one. So you're hearing song one. Well, you're not hearing it now. Uh, thanks, YouTube. But yeah, you're hearing uh, song one now, and we're playing the who, who's next, and uh, rocking out. You can pause it. You can fast forward it. Cannot rewind it, though, because you cannot jam that tape back in um, the uh, inner spool there. So yeah, and, and you could click uh, your different programs here. You could click over to track two if you wanted to hear a different song or whatever. You know, so that gave you a little bit of control over what you were listening to, but uh, that's about it. And people, like I said, people would click this thing so much that that head would get uh, misaligned, and that's where you got all the the audio problems of hearing two songs at once and whatever, and you just had to kind of realign that stuff. But yeah, this is basically a little little better of an eight track player. This is a Panasonic. It's a brand name. It's a little higher quality. There were a lot of them, like the just little little portable ones, where it was just you know just one big speaker in the front, and the tape went into the side. There was the big console stereos with the A track in the side, but this was a little better one. I wanted to. Oh, look. Here's another problem with 8 tracks. Sometimes this happens. And that's all about 8 tracks. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Robert Fifth, and hopefully you learned a little something, or at least were a little entertained by my 8 track video and my journey into my uh, past. Still love throwing on some 8 tracks every once in a while. Still love repairing some broken ones since, you know, I had all that information when I was a kid. And uh, once again, thank you so much for watching, and uh, take it easy, writer. Hello again, I'm Robert Fithen, and today it's all about 8-tracks. Yeah, 8-track tapes. If you're a little bit younger, you might have seen these things in antique malls or flea markets and wondered what in the world they were. If you're around my age, you might have played some of these as a kid, and if you're a little older, uh, maybe you had these in your car. But yeah, 8-track tapes.